In this video, I'm going to introduce the binomial theorem and how to expand a bracket that has a power and how to solve some of the IB questions where they might want you to find a certain term in the expansion. Okay, so the binomial theorem, we use the binomial theorem because I'm guessing at some stage in high school, we would have come across a binomial, which is something like A plus B, because a binomial has two terms that have been added, by stands for two. And if we had A plus B to the power of two, this is the bracket A plus B, oh, that should be A plus B, multiplied by A plus B. And you probably would have learnt some sort of expanding technique where you, where you multiply the first and the outside and the inside and the last terms, and we'd get A squared plus 2AB plus b squared. So this is a, a binomial expansion where the power was 2. But when we, when we start getting IB questions where it's a plus b to the power of 5, if we were to, to write the bracket a plus b 5 times, we will be sitting there all day trying to expand these brackets and it will be quite a long process. So there is a shorter way to do this and it's called the binomial theorem. Now the formulas that they give you in the IB exams, which are over here, they do look a little bit complicated. They look a little bit scary, uh, but we'll go through an example and they're actually not as bad as they look. Okay, so our example, we're going to try and expand a plus b to the power of 5. Now, in the questions that uh, you might be seeing, uh, you might have different things in here than a and b. There might be x's, 2x's, or x squareds. And there could even be fractions in there. So, this is just a general example of, of two terms, a plus b to the power of 5. Okay, so a plus b to the power of 5. Now, I like to do my full expansion uh, in a bit of a template format, and I'll, I'll show you uh, the template now. The first step is to have a look at what the power is of our bracket. In this case, it's the power of 5. Now, what that straight away tells us is there will be six terms in our full expansion. There's always one more than the power. So, if there's a bracket to the power of 7, there would be eight terms. If it was a bracket to the power of 13, there would be 14 terms in the expansion. So that's the first thing that we know. Now, the first step uh, after that is once we've identified the power, uh, we want to go to the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So you may have seen, you may have seen Pascal's triangle before. It's this very famous triangle and it starts with a one at the top and then each new row starts with a one and finishes with a one and and if you find two numbers and you add them together, you get that number and, and it goes straight below it. So one plus one is two. So example, two and one and two is three, two and one is three, and then it finishes with a one. One and three is four, three and three is six, three and one's four. Now this is this is a very powerful triangle because if we take the fifth row, because our power of our binomial was five, if we take this row here. And we know this is the fifth row because the, f the second term in is five. It's, it may get a little bit confusing because if you count down, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six. It's because this is the zeroth row. This is the first row, second, third, fourth, and fifth. If we look at the fifth row of Pascal's triangle and we have a look at all of those numbers, they are actually all of the coefficients, coefficient meaning the number at the front, of our six terms in our expansion. So 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, and I'm going to write them on top of each other. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. These will be the, the coefficients of our six terms. Now, it also links to up here, see how the binomial coefficient, this n and r, I will touch base on what this is, but this is actually uh, linked to Pascal's triangle. The, this formula here is actually each of these terms in that row. Okay, next we, we have our two terms of our binomial, A and B, and we write them in each row, A, 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 and B, B, B for all of them. And then we need to give these two terms in each row powers. And the way we do this is we take the first term, which is A, and in our first row, we give it the maximum power, which will be this number here, 5. Now, the powers in each row need to add up to 5. So, this one, therefore, must be 0, because 5 and 0 is 5. 
We then go down by one, so it's four, and this will therefore be one, then three, this will be two, this will be two, this will be three, this will be one, this will be four, and this will be zero, this will be five. Now what we actually have here, if we work our way across, is we have our six terms of our full binomial expansion. If we just multiply one by a to the power of five by b to the zero, or well, b to the zero is one, one times one times a to the five is just a to the five. And then if we have five times a to the four times b, we'll have five a to the four b. We'll then have 10 a cubed b squared, then 10 a squared b cubed, five a b to the four, and then one times a to the zero is just one. So we're going to have b to the five. Now, if we add all of these terms together, that is our full binomial expansion. So what we can say is that a plus b to the power of five is a to the five plus five a to the four b plus 10 a cubed b squared plus 10 a squared b cubed and then plus five a b to the four plus b to the five. So it still does take a little bit of time, but this is a, a much easier way than expanding five brackets, and that would take quite a long time. So this would be our full binomial expansion. Now, just to touch base on a few things, uh, what another way of writing these five coefficients here, and I'll put them in a new color, I'll put them in red here, is this is actually five zero, five C zero, this is five C one, this is five C two, and C actually stands for the, the topic in combinations, 5C3, 5C4, and 5C5. Uh, these, this five on top of a zero and five on top of a one, there's a formula to work this out. And it's this formula up here. So if I had, for example, I'll use 5C3, I'll take this one out here. If I wanted to work out what 5, 3 is, 5C3, if we look at this formula, n and r will be five and three. It's n factorial, so five factorial over, and then r factorial, our r is three, and then n minus r factorial. So the top minus the bottom, five minus three is two factorial. And if we were to work out what this is, well, five, ta five factorial is five times four. Now we could write times three times two times one, because that's what five factorial is. But notice the three times two times one will actually cancel out with this three factorial on the bottom line, the three times two times one. So I'm going, I'm going to stop. I'm going to not write all of this three times two times one because that'll cancel out with the three times two times one of this three factorial. Now the two factorial is just two times one. And what we get is 20 over two, which is 10. Now notice that we actually already knew 5C3 was 10 because from Pascal's triangle, this term here is 5C0, 5C1, 5C2, 5C3, that's the one we just did, 5C4, 5C5. So that's what this, uh, this formula up here is, the binomial coefficient. It's linked to Pascal's triangle, or you could just use the formula. Uh, if you have a calculator that looks like my one here, you can actually just type in NCR, NCR, and put five comma three, and it gives you 10. Uh, and if you have a different calculator, it's usually in the probability, uh, it's in the, uh, the section down, it might be actually up in, yeah, it's in the combination section, NCR, so somewhere in the probability section. Okay, so uh, this is how we do a full binomial uh, expansion. We need our coefficients. We then take each of the terms and we give them powers. Those powers need to add up to whatever our main power is. And then we have all of our terms. Now, just to, uh, just to point out something, often in IB exams, they don't ask for a full expansion. They'll just ask for one term. They'll just say, in the expansion of a plus b to the power of five, what is the, and they'll just ask for one term. And what you'll need to realize is that you don't need to do the full expansion. You just need to forecast which row they will want you to find. 
the question might have said, what's the a cubed b squared term, which is one here. And you could have realized that it would be 5c something, a to the power of obviously 3, because that's what they want you to find. It'd be b to the power of 2. And you just need to work out what this bottom number is here. And it's actually just whatever uh, the... See here, it's just going to be either 2 or 3. You can actually choose either or, because notice 5c3 and 5c2 are actually the same number. That actually links to the fact that Pascal's triangle is symmetrical either side. So, you don't need to do the full expansion. You could have quickly identified that that uh, question just wanted this row here. Okay, so if you practice a few questions, you'll see, you'll see me use this template. I call it the, the binomial theorem template. Okay, so this is an introduction into the binomial theorem. Uh, we use this theorem to expand binomials with large powers. Uh, it, we need to uh, use the binomial coefficients, which we can use by either this formula here or Pascal's triangle. And now that you've seen this template, hopefully this binomial theorem uh, formula here makes a little bit more sense. It's a plus b to the power of n, and in our question n was 5. We start with a to the n, or a to the 5, and then it was n1, so that was our 5c1. And then we'd have a to the 4, b to the 1, and then all the way down until we had b to the 5. So this scary formula now is a little bit better once we have some numbers in there. Okay, good luck.